Hey everyone, welcome back to The Play Reaction. I'm Corey Draper and I am pumped for this video. I get to share everything you need to know before watching HBO's Hard Knocks for the 2017 season, which so happens to feature my favorite team, the Tampa Bay Pirate Guys. Real quick, I want to remind you to make sure you subscribe because as the NFL season ramps up, there will be a lot more fun videos coming your way. Also, remember to give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram because that is where you will get my quick reactions and explanations of all the major NFL news as it hits. Okay, let's do this. For those of you who don't know, Hard Knocks is a mini documentary series on HBO that follows one team during training camp and preseason. It's usually only six episodes and covers the drama of new players trying to make the team, old veterans who are trying to win before they retire for good, and the superstars that are trying to build a championship team. It's fascinating, and I definitely recommend you watch it. This video is all about giving you context going into the first episode. I'm gonna go over the top players and coaches, as well as some of the unknown guys who are likely to get some airtime based on their stories. But first, let's get some context on the franchise that we'll be watching for six weeks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks have been around since 1976, and yes, they were as bad as those uniforms lead you to believe. They didn't win their first game until towards the end of their second season. Their 26 game losing streak is a record that will never be broken because of how competitive the league is today. That's right, the Bucks will always be number one at being the worst team ever. Woo! Maybe that's why Bucko Bruce is winking on their helmets. We're a legitimate football team. And that was the Bucks, or the Yucks as they came to be known, for nearly 20 years. They were a bad joke. The Titanic and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Titanic and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Name two disasters that were accompanied by band music. <laughs> they had a couple of good seasons sprinkled in there and even went to the NFC Championship game in 1979, but mostly the Yucks were the laughing stock of the NFL until the mid 90s, when the team was sold to Malcolm Glazer and his family. The Glazers' first big decision ended up being one of the biggest in franchise history. That decision was hiring a young, up-and-coming defensive coordinator named Tony Dungy as their head coach. Dungy came in and completely changed the losing culture in the Bucks locker room and proceeded to turn the Bucks from laughingstock to the most feared defense in the NFL and perennial playoff contenders. Unfortunately, he could never quite get the Bucks to the Super Bowl in spite of having one of the greatest defenses of all time. While the defense was always great, the offense was always just mediocre. The Glazers finally made a tough and controversial decision to fire Dungy after the Bucks were once again knocked out of the playoffs in the 2001 season. Desiring an offensive-minded coach, they traded a bunch of draft picks to get the Raiders head coach, John Gruden. Gruden was the offensive guru the Bucks needed and they ended up winning the Super Bowl the very next season by beating his old team and beating them badly. It was one of the greatest nights of my life and I am not ashamed to admit. The Bucks were up and down the next few years and could never quite recapture that magic. Gruden was eventually fired in 2008 after the Bucks went nine and seven and missed the playoffs. Man, that was the bar back then? That was a winning season. Why did people want him fired? You know what, it's, 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 now's not the time. Well, as you may be able to tell, things spiraled after that. The Bucks have gone through four different head coaches since then, and a whole lot of losing, disappointment, and MRSA. It's been a rough few years, but hey, did you know we have a pirate ship in our stadium? Yar. So that brings us to present day. The head coach is now Dirk Cutter. Quick history on Cutter. He was a former offensive coordinator who had stops in Jacksonville and Atlanta before being hired as the OC for the Bucks in 2015. After one season, the head coach was fired and Dirk was promoted. Last year, he led the Bucks to their first winning season since 2010. I personally can't wait to see Cutter in action on Hard Knocks. He has a blunt personality and a dry wit. He constantly has fun with media members, but isn't afraid to give it straight. He's still relatively unknown outside of Tampa, and I think he will be a pleasant surprise to most people who watch the show. Now let's Let's get to the players. I love almost every player on this team. This is actually the most charismatic Bucks team I have ever seen. And that's saying something if you know anything about the Bucks of the late 90s, early 2000s. It's hard to choose, but I'll give you three players with the biggest personalities that I think will really stand out on Hard Knocks. 
The first person you need to know is the quarterback and Tampa savior, Jameis Winston. Jameis is bursting with personality. He's the charismatic leader in the locker room and has been a catalyst in bringing a winning attitude to the team. He's a former Heisman winner and college national champion, and winning is all he knows. He's dedicated, hardworking, and loves football so much, it's hard to see him without a smile on his face. Now, he got into a good bit of trouble and controversy in college, but he has been an upstanding citizen since entering the league in 2015 and is trying to prove to people that he's maturing. Keep an eye on him when you watch this show. If you're one of those people who aren't convinced yet, you will be by the end. He is that charismatic and genuine. It's hard not to love the guy. Another star player on the Bucks is defensive tackle Gerald McCoy. You may recognize him from the official teaser trailer for this season of Hard Knocks. This guy has been the face of the franchise for most of his career and is a great player on the field and a great person off the field. He's been one of the best defensive linemen in the league for a while. He doesn't shy away from a camera and definitely likes to have fun. He's also a big nerd. It's likely you'll see him in many superhero shirts on the show. There's one player I want to highlight who has a big personality, incredible talent, and most people don't even know who he is, but they will soon. I'm talking about middle linebacker Quan Alexander. Quan is an undersized guy with a humongous chip on his shoulder. He was drafted in the fourth round of 2015 and ended up surprising everyone when he immediately earned a starting job. He hasn't stopped being the underdog since. This guy is full of energy, motivation, and dedication to be great. He's the fire of the defense, and he's a stud on the field. He's one of the most underrated linebackers in the league, and hard knocks likely will be his time to shine before he hits the field this season. Believe me guys, the heart in this dude is unmatched. I really hope he gets featured because he deserves to be. It's pretty clear I have a man crush on all these guys. There are so many great personalities on this team, it would take forever to cover them all. So here are some honorable mentions that I think may get a lot of play on Hard Knocks. First, offensive linemen and besties Ali Marpet and Donovan Smith. They're the odd couple of the NFL and hilarious together. Then there's Mike Evans, who is one of the best wide receivers in the league. And finally, Vernon Hargraves, who we like to call the Hillsboro Hyena because, well, because of this. <laughs> Now, there are always storylines that they'll choose to highlight if a player is specifically looking to turn heads in training camp. Here are some storylines that the show is likely going to focus on. First, there's running back Doug Martin. His situation is interesting. He's had an up and down career. When he's up, he's one of the best running backs in the league. When he's down, he's hurting the team. Last year was one of Martin's down years. He was injured for the majority of it, and when he did play, he was ineffective. To make matters worse, he failed a drug test and now has to finish a four-game suspension this season. This year is about redemption for Martin. This training camp, he's trying to prove that he can be the duggernaut again and that his drug problems are in the past. One more misstep, though, and he could be out of a job before his suspension is even over. The team could cut him during training camp without a salary cap penalty. One of the things they love to highlight on Hard Knocks is position battles. What's funny is that the fiercest battle this year during camp will be for the kicker position. In the 2016 draft, the Bucks became the butt of a lot of jokes when they traded back into the second round to draft kicker Roberto Aguayo. Yeah, they drafted a kicker. No, that doesn't happen very often, especially as high as the second round. So naturally, there was a ton of undeserved pressure on the kid. It was a controversial decision to draft him, and through no fault of his own, he was under a huge microscope and folded under that pressure. He went from being the most accurate kicker in college to the least accurate kicker in the NFL last year. So the Bucks have brought in a veteran to compete with him named Nick Folk. Folk has been in the league for 10 years and is the favorite to win the position, unless Aguayo can have a complete turnaround. And finally, let's talk about some of the rookies. Every year, Hard Knocks likes to focus on some of the low-drafted or undrafted rookies who are fighting for a spot on the roster. Here are my guesses as to who they will follow. First, there's the French-Canadian tight end, Anthony Auclair. The NFL doesn't have a huge international representation when it comes to players, so that in and of itself may make him an interesting follow. Sure, he's just from America's hat, but like, he went to college at Université Laval. Sounds so... not American. But that's not the only reason they may follow him. 
Anthony could be a huge find for the Bucks. He's got the physical tools and he's been shining this offseason, impressing coaches and media in OTAs and rookie camp. It's possible this guy could come out of nowhere and land a roster spot at a competitive position. And this is a guy who grew up playing crazy Canadian roles, like having only three downs, a 15-yard end zone, and shoving a Tim Hortons donut in his mouth after every touchdown. Another guy they may find interesting is the seventh round pick, defensive tackle Stevie Tuiko. Defensive tackle Stevie Tuiko. Stevie Tulakam. Stevie Tuiko Kamikaze. Defensive tackle Stevie Tuikila Mockingbird. Stevie Tuikila Vatu. I did it, guys. Let's just call him Stevie T. Stevie T went to USC, and there's a few things interesting about this guy, aside from his name. For one, he's 25 years old, which is older than most rookies. He went on a two-year mission after redshirting his freshman year. Also, he and his wife lived in a car for six weeks in college. The reason is because when he transferred from Utah to USC, there was a delay in his paperwork and backwards NCAA rules would not allow him to accept things like food and shelter from his new school until his transcripts arrived. My guess is they probably kept spelling his name wrong. Well, that wraps it up. You now have all the context you need before watching Hard Knocks. Let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to the most about the upcoming season. I'm talking to you especially, Bucks fans. And finally, remember to subscribe if you haven't already and follow the Play Reaction on Twitter and Instagram so you can be up to date on all the recent NFL news. Thanks for watching.